Okay, question four is um, analyzing a rolling billiard ball, striking a stationary one. Um, this is what happens all the time when you're playing pool. So say your cue ball is like that. That's the, hey, I know, I've got a computer. Why don't I use that to draw circles for me? There we go. So there's a cue ball, and it's going to strike something else. Well, I don't want it to be dead on. So say it's the eight ball, whatever, and comes in at... Uh, let's say its initial velocity we have was u1. They both have a mass of m. Okay, and then afterwards, um, oh, hell, all right, fine, more circles. Yeah, circle, circle. Okay, afterwards, they're going to break and go off, and we want to prove, um, so, da. Okay, so, V2 is the final speed of the target ball, and V1 is the final speed of the, or sorry, final velocity. Final velocity, sorry. And so we want to prove that um, V1 and V2 are perpendicular. So the hint given is that um, for any vector A, the dot product of A with itself is going to be equal to the magnitude of A squared. And so the trick here is um, the elastic collision um, this is an elastic collision that occurs here, and so the condition that is always true for an elastic collision is that kinetic energy is conserved. So what we're going to be doing for objects that have kinetic energy, instead of writing one half m b squared, we're going to write one half m b dot v. Okay. So uh, let's set this up for this guy. So if the momentum conservation equation for this, this uh, collision is your initial momentum, which is m times u1, that's the momentum of this guy, this guy has no momentum, uh, is going to equal m v1 plus m v2. Okay, and for kinetic energy, conservation there is that one half m u1 dot u1, so this is what we're saying, instead of saying u1 squared, we're saying u1 dot u1, okay? Equals 1 half m v1 dot v1 plus 1 half m v2 dot v2. Okay, so uh, what do we do next? Well, cancel, 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 okay, cancel, 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 and cancel, 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 cancel. Oh, except for the plus. You can't cancel the plus. Okay. Sorry, that's the cute voice I use when talking to the kitties. Ooh, tussle, tussle, tussle. Okay. Anyway, so uh, what we get, this is what we get down to here. And what we want to do basically is take this u1 equals v1 plus v2 and substitute that in for these two u1s here. So what we're going to get now is v1 plus v2 is going to be our this dot product of that with v1 plus v2, okay, and that is going to equal v1 dot v1 plus v2 dot v2. Okay, now uh, this is uh, the sum of two things dotted with the sum of two other things. Dot product is a form of multiplication, so this is really, um, we can apply FOIL to this basically is what it comes down to. So we do first, which is v1 dot v1 plus outer, which is v1 dot v2 plus inner, which is v2 dot v1 plus last, which is v2 dot v2. Okay, and that is going to be equal to the same right hand side, which is v1 dot v1 plus v2 dot v2. And I guess I should do my parentheses all the way through. Okay, now this is not, uh, you know, this is tedious uh, algebra, but fortunately now things start canceling. So this and this cancel out, and this and this cancel out. And furthermore, because uh, the dot product is commutative, v1 dot v2 and v2 dot v1 are actually the same thing. So we're adding up v1.v2 to itself. So actually, it's going to be 2v1.v2. Oops. 
will equal, and the right-hand side there was nothing there, equals zero, which means then v1 dot v2 equals zero, and the only ways for these two things to be zero are for them to be perpendicular. Or, well, okay, or one of them could be zero. So if one of them's zero, then what you have is the one-dimensional case where all the momentum of this guy gets transferred to this guy, and that's if you have a head-on collision. But if you don't have that, then these two are both not zero, in which case they have to be perpendicular. So V1 is perpendicular to V2, or V1 is zero. I guess you could say or V2 equals zero. Um, that would be another solution, but if V2 equals zero, so mathematically V2 equals zero is a solution, but not really physically, because if V2 is zero, then the collision didn't happen. Okay, so anyway, but that's that's how you prove then that these two guys at the end have to um, have to break at right angles. Now, figuring out exactly what angles they break at, you have to know the angle, or you have to know how these guys, uh, the angle between these guys when they collide, and then the impulse on two will go in the direction of whatever uh, the line connecting their centers, but. That's, that's If you're not given that, then all you can do is prove they go at right angles. Note that this only works if they have the same mass, because if they have the same mass, you can cancel all this stuff out. If they don't have the same mass, you can't. Okay, So they have to have the same mass, and the target has to be stationary at first, because if the target wasn't stationary, then you would have a second term in here plus mu2, and then you wouldn't get this nice substitution for u, uh, u1. It wouldn't work. Okay. So that's all for that problem.